Picture this. You go in to get your glasses prescription updated, you have your annual eye exam. At the end of the appointment, your doctor tells you, you have glaucoma. Here are some sample drops to take home. I'll see you in a week or two, and we'll see how the pressure is doing. Uh... I sincerely hope that that doesn't happen to you or anyone, but unfortunately, there are doctors out there who may not have the best bedside manner, but more so than that, they simply don't have all that much time with their patients. And so I'm hoping to fill in the blanks a little bit. So you were told you have glaucoma. What now? Are you gonna go blind? How long do you have with your vision? How is it going to affect your vision? How is it going to affect your life? How is it going to affect your daily routine? How often are you gonna to have to come back and see your doctor? Because man, sometimes you're in that waiting room for two hours. There's so much that bombards the mind when you get news like this. So hopefully I can clear some things up for you. Let's get started. There are many different types of glaucoma and the underlying causes really vary and so the treatments vary. And I'm just gonna be kind of doing a general overview of what to expect if you've been diagnosed with glaucoma. Of course, if you have been diagnosed with acute angle closure glaucoma, that's much more of an emergency situation and I'm sure you've been able to tell that. The treatment was immediate and there is definitely follow-up to that. But this is covering the other types of glaucoma that are rather chronic conditions. I won't get into the mechanics of glaucoma too much because that's for another video, another day. But basically what you need to know is glaucoma affects the optic nerve that connects the eye to the brain. And this is controllable often by lowering the eye pressure and that helps to reduce the amount of stress that's put on this optic nerve because the optic nerve is the important pathway. Truly, we don't know what exactly causes glaucoma we don't understand the full picture of it, but we know that poor oxygen supply can cause a lot of strain to the nerve as well. And so your doctor may even ask for you to be checked for sleep apnea. So if your eye doctor tells you to go get that evaluated, don't think they're crazy. Your eyes don't exist on their own. They're inside of your body and your body requires blood, oxygen, you know, all those things you already know to function. And there are things that we're finding out more and more as time goes on that can help us to solve these underlying problems. And there are tests that your doctor may recommend that might sound way out of left field. You know, ask them what it's all about, ask them those questions to clear things up. And if you really feel you need to, you can of course get a second or even third or fourth opinion, but definitely don't take their recommendations lightly. There are a number of tests that we do at every comprehensive eye exam. And while a number of them may seem painful or irritating or like some version of light torture, they're all for a purpose, I promise. One of the tests that may make us think you're at risk for glaucoma would be that eye pressure test. This is done in different ways, sometimes with that puff of air, sometimes with numbing drop, followed by a light tapping of the eye. There are a number of ways to do it, but also another way to test for this is for the doctor to look inside the eye at the optic nerve itself. This is where we use all of those really bright lights on your dilated eye. I know it feels like you're staring at the sun, but it's all for a reason. We're looking through this enlarged dilated pupil into the back of the eye at the optic nerve, which is way here at the back. The optic nerve has a certain appearance and if it falls out of this, what we consider a normal range, we become suspicious. And with that, even if your eye pressure is normal, you will likely become a glaucoma suspect. And that is when the testing begins. The definition of glaucoma is progressive change in the optic nerve over time, causing loss of peripheral vision. So if you have an irregular optic nerve, but you don't have loss of peripheral vision, then the doctor will probably still monitor you for a while, but you may lose your suspect status. If you do have changes in the peripheral vision, along with this optic neuropathy, whether there's high eye pressure or not, you will go from a glaucoma suspect to having a glaucoma diagnosis. So what is the doctor going to do to figure all of this out? Well, I think what's hard for people with a new diagnosis of glaucoma, it's hard for them to accept the number of appointments they're going to have. There are certain recommendations you know, for every aspect of eye care. Each individual diagnosis has its own set of recommendations that we are taught to and should follow. So one of the main things is we wanna to check to make sure 
what the eye pressure is at our starting point. So the eye pressure is often checked at multiple different appointments to find some sort of an average. That way we know where we're starting. The eye pressure can actually vary depending on time of day and even day to day. So we want to make sure we have an accurate representation. As your doctor brings you back to check the eye pressure, they will likely do a number of other tests. And that is because this helps us to look at different aspects of your vision to determine what type of glaucoma you have. There are a number of different types of glaucoma and depending on the type of glaucoma, the ideal treatment may be different than for another. So it's important to have all of the information that we need before we start treatment at all. In general, for glaucoma, you wanna have more information before you get started with treatment. So some of these tests may be to check the corneal thickness. That is because the corneal thickness affects the measurement of the eye pressure. A really thick cornea will give a higher eye pressure reading than a thinner than average cornea, even if they technically have the same pressure inside. This is done with a pachymeter. The eye is numbed and then the pachymeter lightly taps against the corneal surface and gives a number readout for the central corneal thickness. Another test is called gonioscopy and that is where a lens that looks like this will be placed on the cornea, the front of the eye, after numbing drops again of course. There are different ones of these that function a little bit differently. The test may be uncomfortable because of the bright lights and the fact that there's something that you know is touching your eye, but remember your eye is numbed, try to stay calm, Easier said than done. Trust me, I've had this done on myself as well. So I know that it can be a scary experience, but that's why I'm here. I want you to be prepared for what's going to happen so you can mentally prepare for what is to come. The purpose of gonioscopy is to tell whether the angle of the eye is open or closed, and that helps to classify the type of glaucoma. It will also allow the doctor to tell whether there is damage to the edge of the iris, which may point to a different type of glaucoma or pigment in the angle, which is a different type of glaucoma. There's just a lot we can find out from doing gonioscopy, so it is an important test. The angle is the angle between the back of the cornea and the front of the iris, and you need a special lens like that to bend the light a particular way to see into that angle. There is no other way to do it. You'll also do a visual field test and you may have taken kind of a rudimentary visual field test at your comprehensive eye exam where you click a button when you see lights flashing but it takes maybe a couple of minutes per eye but this more advanced visual field test is this big white globe and it takes seven-ish or more minutes per eye depending on how you're doing on the test. You click a button every time you see a light, but the important part is that you have to look at the center focal point the entire test because of course we're testing your peripheral vision. So if you're looking everywhere, that's not a very accurate test, is it? That's probably the hardest part to get patients to follow well. And sometimes we don't always get the most accurate information back depending on the person's level of participation or understanding of the test. This visual field test is very important to give us a baseline of your peripheral vision because, like I said before, glaucoma causes change of your peripheral vision over time. So when you're diagnosed with glaucoma, you don't expect change in your central vision. It happens in the periphery, but the trouble is that the peripheral vision changes so slowly over time that you don't notice it happening until it's too late. I talked about that a little bit in my other video here. The doctor may have you take a few different baseline visual field tests, especially if the first one was inaccurate. That way they can use these and compare over the course of many years to see if the glaucoma is progressing and by how much. That helps us to know if we need to adjust your treatment or not. And finally, what the doctor will want to frequently examine is the health of the optic nerve. The optic nerve can be examined with or without dilation, but dilation definitely makes it easier. But if you're in for a really quick appointment, like just an eye pressure check, they'll look back at the optic nerve without dilating the eye in most cases. This also helps them to evaluate if there are any changes in the optic nerve over time. Another way they may monitor for changes in the optic nerve over time are with images. One type of image a doctor may take 
is a fundus photo. A fundus photo is just an image of the back of the eye. There are machines now that can take it without dilating the pupil very well. Images are extremely helpful for monitoring changes in the optic nerve over time because even though the doctor is looking in there regularly, it's not like they can remember exactly what your nerve looked like and then recall that back, you know, two weeks or months later is just much nicer and more helpful and good practice to have pictures to compare back to back. So those have been very beneficial. There are other instruments that monitor for changes in the optic nerve over time that are a little different than fundus photos. Fundus photos are kind of like photos. It's if you could see directly into the back of the eye and take a picture, that's what it would be. But this other type of image is a very precise image of the thickness in certain parts of the lens and the thickness of the edge of the lens compared to the space in the center. All of these are important data points that help us to tell if the nerve is changing over time. There are a couple of different instruments out there that can give us this information, but I would say the most common one is called an OCT, which is Optical Coherence Tomographer. If your doctor doesn't have one of these, they probably have a GDX, and sometimes it just depends on what the doctor is comfortable with or what they have available in their office. But there are both ways to monitor the optic nerve on a more microscopic level. So you might think that's a lot of testing and that it's kind of over the top, but really glaucoma is a very difficult disease to monitor and treat. Some of the changes can be very subtle. Sometimes the instruments give us bad information, especially if you have cataracts or dry eye, for example. Another thing that can make it tough is inaccurate visual field tests. Even if a patient is really tired one day, they may not do as well on a visual field test. It may look like a false worsening of the condition. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to treating glaucoma, so the more information we have, the better. So we know all of the tests to expect, and that brings us to how often are you gonna have to see your doctor in order to get all of these things done? Well, usually when you're a suspect or you have the initial diagnosis, the exams will be more frequent because they're trying to get more baseline measurements to compare to later, and they're trying to make sure they get you on the right treatment before having you out of the office for a long period of time. So don't be surprised if your doctor wants to see you every week or two or multiple times over the course of a month in the beginning, even if it is a mild case of glaucoma. It really depends on the doctor and the severity of the glaucoma, but beyond the initial diagnosis stage, when they're treating you with glaucoma long term, unfortunately it is a chronic disease, so this will need to be monitored carefully for your lifetime. If it's a mild case, some doctors may see you every six months. If it's a really severe case, it may be every three months or even more. It really just depends on the situation and how rapidly the peripheral vision seems to be changing or how high the eye pressure is, how difficult the eye pressure is to control, or how rapidly the optic nerve is changing. Also, any presence of systemic diseases that may affect it, like high blood pressure or diabetes, may lead your doctor to want to see you more frequently. So keeping healthy is very important. When it comes to the treatment of glaucoma, we have a lot more options than we used to. Usually it's treated with eye drops. There are some drops that are dosed once a day, some twice, some three times, and it really depends on how the drop functions itself. So I think a difficult thing for doctors sometimes is patients will come back and say, oh well, you know, my eye felt fine, so I didn't use it that day. And, and you're like, okay, well, it's not about how it feels because glaucoma doesn't really feel like anything unless it's that acute angle closure emergency glaucoma I mentioned before. But it's really tough because it has to be used consistently. And the reason that some drops are once a day and some are two or three times is because these drops have different half-lives, which is a whole nother story, but it just refers to how long the drug remains in your system, treating the problem at hand. So if you're using a drop once a day that's supposed to be used three times, you're only lowering the eye pressure for a third of the amount of time you should 
and it's shown that spikes in eye pressure when people skip their drops can actually be very damaging. Sometimes it will take a combination of these drops to lower your eye pressure to the eye pressure target your doctor has determined. And this target is based off of a number of factors. One important thing to remember as you're going through this period of the glaucoma diagnosis and the treatment is to know that glaucoma tends to be a slowly progressing disease. So I think a lot of people get so overwhelmed by the diagnosis and it can be really heartbreaking. And yeah, it is hard to be diagnosed with something that needs to be treated long term, but the important thing to know is that there is a treatment available. There are a number of eye conditions and other conditions that don't have treatment. Definitely hard to look on the bright side when it's your particular situation, but have that hope and see your doctor and don't hesitate to seek out second opinions. If you're you know, wondering about that or if you have concerns, that's well within your right and you should feel comfortable with your treatment journey. Beyond eye drops, there are actually treatments now where a laser can be used and that is to help increase passage of the eye fluid that circulates through the eye to reduce the pressure. There are also various surgeries that can be done to give an alternate pathway for the fluid and there are implants that can be placed in the eye to remove the fluid. Those are called shunts. Sometimes even a oral medication will be prescribed and this is definitely more often in severe cases that can't be controlled. I hope you have a little greater insight on what may be going on and that you have more confidence as you approach this treatment to your glaucoma. Remember, while preventative medicine is the best medicine, sometimes things like glaucoma happen and it's not necessarily something that you can prevent, but you can prevent progression from happening rapidly by following your treatment regimen, following up with your doctor regularly, and making sure that you go in for those annual appointments because they may find glaucoma. And if you wait several years in between, you may have had undiagnosed glaucoma for a long time, and it makes it more likely for you to lose a greater amount of vision over time the later you start to treat it because you had all those early years untreated. So don't hesitate to call your doctor and remember to go to those regular comprehensive eye exams.